Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. No history, you no wrestling, you no matches. My belly's just a little big, my eye is just a little big, but brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. There is no revolution. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if no. they piss somebody, if they took somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast, the wrestling podcast to review Monday Night Raw and give all of you people the wrestling news of the week. I feel like I want to swallow my mic and speak like Barry White to all of you beautiful subscribers of this show. Mm, oh yeah. Mm. That's a weird opening. My yeah, name is Turbo Tony. Weird. <laughs> yeah. I am the host of this show. I don't do this alone, of course. I do this with my co-host, and he is a man who has lived his life as my butler for quite some time until I added nipples onto my bat suit. It's Matt Marsander. No. No? I do not accept that I am your Alfred. You are Alfred. Absolutely you're an Alfred. I am not your Alfred. Yeah, yeah. Because no. I'm, I'm the hero. Everyone knows that. I am certainly not your Alfred. <laughs> uh, I will be your boy wonder at the very least. <laughs> at the very least. I'm glad we came to that assumption. You know, I'm sure someone out there, if, if our faces were ever out there, I'm sure that our faces would be planted onto Batman and Robin as we speak. But uh, as is the nature of the internet, of course. It should be like, well, to be fair, what I'm thinking it should be Rodney and Del Boy, but you know. <laughs> Well, Rodney and Delboy, to be honest, yeah. Uh, we, we were not exactly the superhero type, uh, but there we are. There we are. Uh, how you been this week, uh, been this week Matt? Yes, yeah, not too bad. It's just been busy. Mm. It's just mm. been crazy. I mean, it's look. It's not the fact that I don't know. What, I can't handle like a pay per view. But it's just like I don't know what's happened this week. Because I've had no time. But you couple a pay per view week with a busy week, and then yeah, it kind of goes. It all kind of goes to hell. Yeah, yeah. Like it was one of those things that like the Lucha review went up like yesterday as as this episode goes out, and that's yeah. like really late. That's like two days late of when I normally do it. It's just like because you know things get backtracked, and then you know um, uh, things end up like yeah, end up taking a, a set setback, and yeah, it's just a pay per view week. It's all that sort of shit. Yeah. But. Uh, let's drop some uh, some plugs on these guys, Matt, before we tell them what's involved in the show. Do a little bit of procrastination, of course. If you guys would like to interact with us, the main way to do that is via our Facebook page, and that is facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast, where we had plenty of chat about this week's releases there on that page. Um, and, of course, Matt, there is a place, a favorite place, where you can send a tweet to us. That Twitter handle is... At Talk Wrestle Pod. It is, it is, without question. That is the Twitter handle of gods, of kings. But there we are. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to send us any audio questions or private emails, mm, then you can send it to Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. All that uh, lovely social media goodness is in the, uh, in the description below. Some of it's even on the graphics. Last week, by the way, we had these graphics up. Next week, new graphics. Oh. That's very true. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? Mm, tasty. Tasty indeed. Uh, procrastination, Matt. I think there's only one thing we need to talk about, and that's uh, a certain movie that came out this week, Matt, that you've seen and, and now I've seen. Ah. Yeah. We're, of course, talking about Captain America Civil War. What do you think about it, Matt? Without spoilers. Without spoilers for our, for, for our viewers. Um. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I still I think Winter Soldier was a better film. I oh, I'm actually the other way around. Not that I didn't like the movie, I did, but I thought this was better than Winter Soldier. I don't know. I think Winter Soldier had the better story. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe, but yeah, you know what? It's still a, it's still a good fun. Oh yeah. After- after you and me came back and watched like Batman versus Superman, you go watch a comic book movie that knows what it is, has its identity. 
isn't trying to shoehorn like five movies into one movie. They're just trying to do that movie. And yeah, it's a lot more of an right, enjoyable it has his identity firmly in place. Yeah. Yeah. It knows the thing is like, this is a film that has had like, been like eight years in the making sort of thing with every, every film leaning up to this. It's like, so it's had plenty of time. Yeah. And you know what's cool about that then is that it's uh, you're seeing some of these superheroes clash for the very first time on on, on the big screen, right? So that's uh, uh, quite a big selling point there. But, uh, still, you know I me, mean, Matt. You know what I'm like. I just would like the Punisher there with a gun just to be shooting people randomly. But I know that's not exactly, you know, that I think that's more for the more mature audience. You know, you can't have quite work. Can't have Spider Man in his first battle get a headshot by by. Punisher. Just headshot him. It's just like, oh, the, the boy, the boy. <laughs> Dead. Oh, yeah. Iron Man would feel pretty bad about it then, wouldn't he? But uh, alas, that's the way things go when Punisher's around, but still. Anything else you've been up to this week, Matt? No. No? Just a whole lot of work. Uh, I'm feeling currently a little bit sick, so I hope I get through this episode. Oh, that's news. good. I I'm feel glad, like I'm, I'm glad you, that we are on separate sides of headsets, so you cannot carry this over to me <laughs> well the glory of this new headset matt is that you can hear the illness in my voice and slowly you will become ill yourself it's good it's the let's talk infection podcast sorry guys you're i've like got you all sick as well zero. yeah i've started it all oh well i will give you some stomach problems and a mild headache <gasps> you monster well, they'll, they'll make Resident Evil movies about me soon, Matt. Oh, God. But <laughs> that's the real T-virus, everyone. It's me. It's over here right now. Uh, anyway, I've got Mila Jojovic chasing me. There's worse things than that, I guess. Quite a nice looking woman, but still. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's going to wreck you. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> All right, then. What have we got on this week's show? Of course, we've got the news, including WWE chopping off heads left, right, and center, which is quite uh, interesting, at the very least. Uh, of course, we've got our fan feedback. We've got the trivia this week, a little bit of NXT news, and the Raw review one week off of WWE Payback. So we'll be able to give our thoughts on that show. And if you want to hear my thoughts on a certain Lucha Underground episode, I will not give any spoilers because Matt hasn't seen it. I had leveled this week's late Lucha Underground episode as the highest ranking um, review score that we give here on the show, which is watch it multiple times on this week's episode. Ah. And it was for one match. So I'll leave that at your doors. Go watch Lucha Underground. Come back or go watch Lucha Underground. Watch my Lucha Underground review. Then come back. It's a lot of stuff to do, but it's worth it. And then... And then you can join up with uh, everything here. So go on, Matt. You do your thing. You go watch Lucha Underground now. Okay. We'll wait for you here. But okay. I thought you, it's going to be about 50 minutes of nothing, guys. But, you know, I'm giving you time now. So, all right. Let's do it. All right. 50 minutes. Okay. You know, I, I don't think we can keep that up. No, Matt. No, Matt. We can't have a podcast like this. It's too quiet. I don't like it. Did you actually go? Are you there? Hello? I think he went. I didn't actually mean that. Guys, I I think I I think I screwed up the plans for the show. Um <laughs> <laughs> Could keep it up for much longer, no? <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> uh you, you you literally a couple of more seconds, Matt, you may have actually had me feeling like you might have been um I may have genuinely gone. You might have genuinely gone, yeah. Uh, so I titillated you enough with uh, ideas of lucha goodness. Anyway, let's get into this, Matt. So let's talk about the news. Uh, I think the first place that we really have to go here, there's two big news stories, Matt. One involves Ryback and the other involves a lot of big releases in WWE. You tell me which news story you'd like to cover first. Ooh, what should we begin with? Hmm. Which Pandora's box do you wish to open? We start off with Ryback and then work our way up. All right, no problem. All right, we'll start with Ryback. So the news of Ryback this week is that he showed up to Raw and he told them that he would like to be taken off TV until his contract issues are resolved. Okay? Which they agreed with. They, they took him off. They actually sent him home. They said, look, if you want to be taken off TV, there's no point you being here. Go home. Right? 
And his contract is due to be up quite soon. They haven't met um, a meeting ground in terms of a, of a of a re-signing here, which is fair enough, right? Okay. But what made this more interesting? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, Wade Barrett had the same thing. He got released this week. Why is this any bigger than that? It's because Ryback decided to release a very lengthy statement regarding his reasons why he has a problem with re-signing with WWE. Now, a lot of people have fired at him. You've got the likes of Val Venus, funny enough, firing off at him um, for, I don't know why, but he chosen to, to, to do so. Don't know why, but okay. Good because of reasons. Because he feels that Ryback's completely wrong. Now, whether or not Ryback is, is wrong or right, you have to commend him for having the balls to speak out of turn. Right? Because at the end of the day, it's not many times that you're going to hear a, a wrestler take on WWE in the fashion like this. No. It's incredibly ballsy. I guarantee you, he's not coming back. He's done. Right? WWE will not, will not, re, not re-sign him. So let's go into what he, what he said in his statement. Now, the main, the main thing that he said in his statement is he has, he has a, a gripe with the fact that in a predetermined entertainment, sport, whatever you want to call it, that some people are paid an extortionate amount more than other people. So like people that will go and do a job for someone are getting paid a lot less than someone that's getting booked, you know, to win matches and matches and matches and matches and matches, right? The way I understood it is, why is Brock Lesnar earning more than me? I don't think it came across like that. What I think he's (laughs) getting at, what I think he's getting at here is, Listen, like he understands that it's entertainment, but the fact is, let, let's look at this. Let's look at this from his point of view. He's looking at this like, okay, if this was a sport, right? If I performed fantastically well, I would be paid this the equal amount that is to the point of my qualities, right? Yeah. So if you're a five out of ten midfielder playing for Newcastle, you'll be paid like a five out of ten playing for Newcastle, right? That's just the way it is, unless your agent's very fucking good, right? In the in in, in WWE, it's it's much different because you're completely at the mercy of how management chooses to book you and to use you. That you you don't have that much wiggle room to really break through what they've got planned for you. You could have fantastic matches, but never get to our, a main event status. And there's been plenty of guys that have been like that. So I look at it from his point of view and I'm like, look, look, look even further from his point of view, Matt. Imagine if he was handled differently, right back, right? Right at the beginning. He could have been, if he was used correctly, a main event star. I still firmly believe that to this day, but he yes. lost 13 pay-per-views i think maybe 14 close to that amount anyway he lost it yeah a lot a lot of pay-per-views back to back that essentially destroyed him now that wasn't his choice it was management choosing to book him that way so therefore he suffers because of other people not using him correctly you know and he's not ever going to be paid like a main event talent because they sort of mucked him around they sort of fucked it up a bit um, which I can imagine is extremely frustrating from the point of view of someone working there. And it's like, I could be making John Cena money, right? Not not as close to that, of course, but I could be making a lot more than I yeah, could be. I mean, a lot of it, I think some of it comes down to the fact that it's like, if you consider like at one point, um, like Ryback has always been booked as like a hot commodity, he hasn't always, though. Not always. Yeah, okay. But, like, consider when he came out. Like, debut of The Shield. Yeah, yeah. He, where was Ryback? He was right in there, yeah. I actually watched right, that match the other day, yeah. Right in the middle of it all. Um, going for uh, the, sort of, the WWE... Yeah, the WWE Championship. Yeah, and then he turned heel, cool. and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he, nothing happened. Nothing came of it. That was that. Hmm. Uh, and then sort of like we used this example loads because we loved it which was then he floundered around a little bit and then along came Survivor Series and they're like 
Ryback, fuck, everyone wants Ryback. Because mm. without Ryback, you're screwed. Sort of yeah. Thing. Yeah. And oh, then he okay, we had the match and now nobody gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and in, when you look at it, that point of view, Matt, wasn't it management that kind of messed it stuff around for him? I don't think he had a bad performance at Survivor Series. It was just how they chose to use him afterwards. What I think is interesting with this, that he brings up a conversation that a lot of the old guard in wrestling look at it and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But it does make sense, right? That they're it's it's kind of hard to explain but listen if you're if you're a guy that that, look at roman reigns if you're a guy that wwe for whatever reason they might have correct reasons for choosing a guy like roman reigns which i know because he appeals to a mass audience but if you're a guy like roman reigns you get everything right you get the big push you get merchandise you get put on on television shows so your stock is rising you get put on on advertisements you get put on um uh, you reckon reigns is earning more than ryback oh what well, that question he's earning more than ryback oh without without even without even i don't even have to know the numbers and i know he's earning more than ryback is um so the person that he pick he may not even be down to uh, to entirely their effort or their abilities or their potential. It's just down to whether or not WWE has picked them as their next chosen one. Right. So, and then, like I said, the neb earning big bucks, right. From then on out, these guys get to a point where they don't even need WWE to promote them anymore because WWE's made them established stars at that point, And they're mm-hmm. going to make money. Look at John Cena. Now he doesn't need WWE to get paid. Right. But that's just the, the case. It is. It's um, you're looking at a lot of lower car talent that I think WWE are very wary of about creating the wrong stars. And what I mean by that, if they get really behind someone that they think may eventually question them or try and make some sort of change or thinks that does a CM Punk and realizes that their worth is far more than what the company is willing to accept, then all of that promotion and all the work that they've done goes out the window. So they're picking guys that they think will stick with them no matter what they do, right? Let's just be honest. Like That's part of the reason why they picked John Cena initially is because he's loyal. Roman Reigns, he's going to be loyal to the company, right? He's going to be loyal to the company that stood by him, booked him incorrectly, but he won't see it that way, but have paid him very handsomely. And I think WWE are very aware about creating too many big stars and suddenly some of them... Like, imagine if Ryback had left the company now as a huge star. Yeah. That would have been a lot more of a weighty issue. To the WWE, letting him go now is not nearly much of a problem. Because let's be honest, let's go and say he goes to TNA. No one's going to give a shit. I like Ryback, but no one's going to give a shit. Right? No one's going to care. No one's going to leave WWE to watch TNA if Ryback's there. Yeah. Let's just be honest. So I think it's a statement that a lot of people are writing off. I think it's incredibly in- incorrect and naive and short sighted to write it off. I think it has some merit. And you have to look for the problems here. You have to put yourself in his shoes and put himself in the shoes of a lot of the other mid carders on that roster and think I've like killed myself at this live show to give this 5,000 fans a a great, a great time. And I've done a great performance, but this guy over here, like he he doesn't nearly work as nearly as hard as me. He's not nearly as good as me, but it's just for some reason, management used to get behind him. He's getting paid two, three, four times the amount I am, right? And they're making me lose to him on a weekly basis so this guy can get over. I can understand why he gets frustrated. I mean, I know it's entertainment. It's almost like wanting to, it's like humoring the idea of like the wrestler's union again. Yeah, and by by the way, uh, one thing that would scare the shit out of Vince McMahon is a wrestler's union. He does, he doesn't want that shit or absolutely does not want that. Because that would give power to his employees, and that's exactly what he doesn't want to have. As as a business owner, the one thing I wouldn't want is power in the hands of my employees. That's the reason why unions were created, to give them a a fighting fair shot. And I'm not saying that Ryback wanted to be um, booked differently. I mean, I guess he uh, he hoped he would be. But what he's saying is that he hopes that the pay is a little bit more equaled out here. Like He's not completely naive. He's just hoping that you know, okay, I'm working really hard to get this guy and make this guy, you know, give this guy the, the win that you want me to. Can I be compensated for that work? And I and it, and to him, it doesn't particularly even out. 
But it's it's one of these awkward things, Matt, because wrestling likes to portray itself as like a as like a, a sport and entertainment. Like I said, in sport, your performances equal the pay that you eventually will get. Yeah. In wrestling, it's it's completely at the mercy of a bunch of writers. If a bunch of writers decide they want to make Zack Ryder a new world heavyweight champion and give him, t- uh, you know, eventually his stock will rise. That WWE has to pay him more, and it's down to the writers choosing that to happen. So it's it's it is awkward. It's awkward the way that I'm glad he said this. I'm a little bit afraid that a lot of people just instantly sweeping it aside and saying, "Oh, it's just him being bitter." I'm like, I don't, I actually don't think it is. To be honest, I think he has. I think there's some legitimate gripe here, but. Whichever way you look at it, I think it's an interesting conversation. So, yeah, at the very least. Matt, should we get on to these uh, releases then? Yeah, I think we should. Will we talk about them a little bit individually and just go through the list? Yeah, probably best. All right, first on the list. All these people have been released by WWE. That all happened on Friday. As the day went on, more people getting released. It looked like I, I put up a thing doing the, the JTG quote, just don't answer your phone today if you're a talent on the fringes of WWE. Don't answer your phone because you're going to get released. That's just basically how it, how it goes. Alex Riley has been released. His most recent thing being spoken about is that he's started to fire shots towards the Solar Monster. Since his release, he's been very fucking quiet on that front. So... Um, I'm sure not the best of weeks for him, considering he's been running his mouth. You chat shit, you get banged, basically, in in the words of Jamie Vardy from Leicester. Um, I'm not I'm not saying that's the reason why he got fired. I mean, come on, but he comes across as a guy, Matt, that he had a lot of potential, but especially with some of his more recent Twitter stuff that he's been putting up, he's like he's a liability on a social media front. He's been with the company for ten years almost, kind of time to get rid of him right he's more risk than reward i think what is probably what a lot of the other management are thinking of him what do you what do you think i think yeah i can completely agree that he has sort of become almost like a time bomb mm. um i don't know i think it's just that sort of moment it's like we've it's like dude we it's not like we haven't given you the chance i think that's kind of what it a lot of it does come down to it's like so we haven't it's not like we haven't tried yeah i think it's one thing as well because like he, he went off like he reinvented himself um he came back he did pretty good as commentary and then i i will admit i quite liked his nxt persona but it didn't help he got injured though as well didn't yeah, it that's it and he was out for about six months or something you know I so. kind of, I go as far as to say i think he's one of those people that wwe really dropped the ball on uh, to a certain degree, uh, yeah. At a stage of his career, yeah, um, they screwed him. Like he dropped off the face of the planet after he went off after the Miz, and I actually thought he did fairly well in that. But he did really well. I mean, it's, it's unfortunately there's another person on this list that kind of has the same problem with mm. regards to the Miz. Mm. Yeah, funny enough, and that's the the big one I'm leaving towards the end of this list. So Alex Riley's gone. Like I said, I don't think it's because of the things he said recently. I think it's just a culmination. I think WWE are probably looking at him and being like, this guy is probably having a little bit of a, like a, a mental breakdown here. We need to cut bait because like, he looks like he's, he's going to start mouthing off. We don't want that problem. Let's just cut him loose now. Or, to be honest, they've always had a plan to cut him loose and the time in his contract just came up. So, yeah, might have been just that. Hornswoggle is gone. Uh Okay, he barely haven't seen him in a while. I, I think he had a, a much lengthier career than I think most people even realise. I mean, he was there for another, he was one of the other guys that was almost there for about ten years. Like he was there for fucking ages, Hornswoggle. So he got his time. Fair play to the guy. You look at him. The last thing he did was that WLC match with El Torito, who was also cut. Um. So. But I mean, me and Matt weren't particularly big fans of that anyway. But I hope the best for him. He's already got a date. He had a date five, like literally about ten minutes after it was announced he was released. So, yeah. the guy's clearly back to work. You can go book him now if you like. So there you are. Zeb Coulter has been released. This one I'm a little bit shocked with. Until you, agree, uh, you kind of, you kind of made me, you kind of explained it to me, Matt. Why he probably wasn't used again? 
because uh, I thought when you look at Zeb Coulter, you obviously got Dutch Mantel. He is a really good speaker. I thought he could have done something with one of the mid card level talents on that roster. But Matt, you kind of, as we were sp- speaking throughout the week, you kind of said to me there, it's like the Zeb Coulter character, like, who are you really going to put him back with again? And really, would it mean anything once it gets yeah. to that point? Sure, Dutch Mantel, the guy, you could repackage him. But really, are you going to re- turn all, use all that just to try and get someone else over? Surely you'd use all that energy to repackage that talent over rather than the manager to, to, to pair with him. But yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. It's, you can stick it back with Jack Swagger. Who gives a shit, really, at that point? It's kind of done, isn't it? But still. I'm a big fan of Dutch Mantel. What can I say? I'm a bit sad to see him go. Wade Barrett. The one Love all, shock. Yeah, this is the one we all saw coming. Uh, Barrett has gone. Um, we knew this was happening a while back just because he decided that he just doesn't want to do it anymore. I, th- I actually get the feeling, Matt, he's going to try and get into movies and film uh, and obviously television, uh, wherever he can get it. I think he's going to try and um, ply his trade. Obviously not as big of a star name as, let's say, The Rock or anything like that. Of course not. But I think he's going to try and, you know, make a few appearances. He was in that movie, wasn't he, that WWE were promoting for a little while. I think it had, like, Denzel Rossington in it. Or... I know he was in one with Ethan Hall. Oh, Colin, Colin, no, I think it was Colin Farrell was in it, wasn't it? That's it. Yeah, but apparently yeah. he didn't really play anything other was... than just muscle. Yeah, he was like a guard, wasn't he? So, but I think that's probably what he's looking to try and get into. Either that, or he's made his money and decides, you know what, I just fucking feel like resting for a while. In which case, fair play to you. Big props to Wade Barrett. He's one of those guys that WWE could have easily have made a world champion. And going all the way back to the Nexus days. Oh, that's where they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They should have made a world champion back in Nexus. That, yeah. that's, that's how I think. It's so funny, Matt. I went back and watched the Nexus match against Team WWE. He just looks so different without any semblance of a beard. It's 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 weird. Yeah. But it's, it, he's very much sort of like baby face Barrett, isn't it? Mm. And you know, when he came back again from his most recent run, he was like proper ripped. Whereas back then, he was in good shape. He wasn't like ripped or anything like that, you know? And yeah. It's just quite funny to see him back then as opposed to now. Cameron is gone good yeah like to me she's so far low on the titan pole some people are going oh why wouldn't you get rid of eve marie but you got rid of cameron firstly i think eve marie's better than cameron cameron was actually genuinely so insulting to watch wrestle that she was an embarrassment to the industry so even <laughs> as much as we were whinging about it the other week eve marie showed signs of improvement and i'm pretty sure he like <laughs> Cameron went on this big old rant like that she's the victim of cyberbullying and she mentions like what I said on Tough Enough and the pin on Raw but it doesn't matter it's like people make mistakes yeah but even a fucking five year old knows that you pin on your back yeah well listen the whole the whole thing she is being cyberbullied absolutely she's been cyberbullied like us saying like this right that isn't cyberbullying. That's us saying what she is, right? If we said, I hope she dies or I want to rape her because of this, that's when you start getting into cyberbullying. And the, the, the fact is that I'm under no doubt, she even says it in that thing, by the way, in that, in that, in that list. She says she doesn't really mind about people saying what they feel about that. It's when they start going too far, when they start going, oh, oh I hope you die. I hope you're. I hope your family gets raped and all this shit. And I'm completely on board with that. I'm completely like, that should not happen. Twitter, unfortunately, is like a breeding ground for people that think that they can tweet like, this vile shit to people. Like, I'm not a biggest fan. I don't even like her. She's probably someone that I wouldn't even want to spend any iota of time on. Do I hope she gets raped or, like, killed? No, of course not. Because I'm not a fucking sociopath. So... I actually, I'm actually on her side when it comes to the whole cyberbullying thing. But should she have been released? Yeah, yes. to be honest, that, that's my that's my opinion. There. Um, Santino, a lot of people are like he was still with the company. I think he was, but when he retired, he had like a lengthy contract or something, or he came back to do, like with a kind of like appearances contract or something. Along I those don't things. know. To be perfectly honest, the last thing I saw Santino in was on Swerved. 
Oh yeah, it's probably yeah, yeah. That's a while back now, though, isn't it? Jeez, I mean, yeah. Even... I just I seem to remember him just like playing up to the some guy at Access had smashed something, or I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, it's one of those things where I think it's another one of those cases where, yeah, he's not being used. WWE was waiting for his contract to to fade out, court, to, to fade out, and then release him. Um, yeah, and I think he knew it was coming as well, so I don't think he's particularly that bothered. So there we are. El Torito, we kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier on, especially as uh, Epico and Primo have decided to just butt fuck Puerto Rico. I don't know what's got that got to do with wrestling, but apparently that is what they want to do. They love Puerto Rico so much they want to fuck it, people. I love the fact that I find it's just so great that the fact that they haven't even made a debut, and this week they didn't even get their video package. They did this week. Did they get one this week? Yeah, they got a video package this week. I'm, I've got a, I've got a bit of a rant about their video package. So. I missed it then. Yeah, uh, but still. So when you've got no use for him, uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, he's one of those guys that we no longer have the matadors. We don't need a guy who who can dress like a bull. Yeah, you can see El Torito wrestling uh, uh, Mascarita Sagrada and Lucha Underground, probably like yes. season four or something. You know, probably like that. Uh, here's the last. And one. Do you know what? Uh, I'd look forward to that. Yeah, it would be, be pretty badass. They would actually treat them like they're like they're actually something. So there you are. The the one that pains pained everyone the most, I think, Damien Sandow. Mm. He's gone. Um, this is a guy that absolutely you could look at him, and without even thinking about it, I don't have any hesitation saying that WWE absolutely buried this guy. They had no intention of him getting as as popular as he did with a shit gimmick, and he made it work. Um, and then as soon as that ran its course, do you think they were going to give him anything else? No. Nah. He was done after that. It's um, the one part. It's like, you're going to be the Miz's bitch. Well, no, it, they dropped the ball on him just in general. Yeah. And then they were like... Because um, I still go down and reckon that... Um, him being the money in the bank winner, I mean, mm. not the fact that he lost it, well, partly the fact that he lost it. Yeah. But I reckon they could have done quite a good story between him and Cody Rhodes. Yeah, and they never really told it at that point. Nothing really they? happened. Mm. Um, and after that, it's like, right, you're just going to do these comedy bits, which he did, took like a champ. He made it group. his own. Yeah. Didn't he? He owned that and shit. They were like, right, so, yeah, you're good pretending to be people. You can pretend to be The Miz. And guess what? <laughs> he was the biggest guy at, like, last year's WrestleMania. The pop he got was fantastic. Everyone was well into him. And then they told him, you know what's better? You know what's even harder, pretending to be The Miz? How about pretend to be no one? Do you know what? You, you know what? You <laughs> could be Macho Man. Oh, God. Oh, shit. oh wait. We've paired you off with a guy who's pretending to be a big sexist pig and a racist. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's done. Mm. Oh, we're going to have... But the thing, the thing I hate with the most is the fact that like that Sandow almost got... Well, Sandow did get forgotten when it came to the... Um, oh, like Sandow could have been one of the social outcasts, but I quite like how even though he... Like, he did the character of Macho Man. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Curtis Axel was Hogan. And Hogan came out to be the massive racist. And Curtis Axel still kept managed to stick around. Yeah, he still got his job, yeah. How, how did that happen? And uh, Damien Sanders, one of those guys, that he was so versatile, you could have put him anywhere on that roster. You could put him anywhere and he would have done something for you. Yeah. You know? uh, he's, he's one of those guys that, like... Oh man, WWE, they, they really they really dropped the ball on this guy. This is a talent that I would be looking at WWE and be like, you don't even know what you had. You don't even know what you had. You gave this guy shit, he turned it into gold. Imagine what you could do if you gave him gold. It would give you That's fucking it. diamonds. Chicken, you know shit I mean? ch- chicken salad from chicken shit sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, he was a fucking magician. He really was. He managed to make that gimmick something entertaining. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Fair play to him. He doesn't deserve to be released. And I think that he's one of those guys that will be listening a little bit like Ryback. Like, yeah, I kind of tried really hard to make one of their gimmicks get over. I'm sure I wasn't paid nearly as much as I was, as I should be. 
But there we are. Still, uh, it's that one. That one hits close to the home. Out of all of them, there, Damien Sandow had something going that he did himself. He owned that shit. Yeah, and all they had to do was just to give a little bit of care to him, and they and they refused to do it. Um, a real a real shame that one. But yeah, they're all gone. Eight people released. Um, I'm sure that a few people are safe for now. I was actually expecting a lot more of the NXT contingent to be a lot more worried, like uh, uh, like. The likes of um what's his face he's really hype i forgot his name all of a sudden mojo rawley yeah he's oh so yeah, yeah um the fact that i struggle to remember his name i think is quite apt but like people like him i think need to be quite scared right because i think that they are pretty close to that chopping block so there we are uh okay we're actually spending way well what a very long time on the news we still have so much to get through but still adam rose releases his evidence claiming that WWE was wrong in suspending him. He actually removed it and then re-uploaded it. I don't know whether or not WWE pushed him on doing it and whether or not he decided, well, fuck it anyway, or he wants to put it up so it was new on his feed. I don't know, but it's back up there now. Um, This guy is so adamant with his innocence that he's willing to put his dream job on the line to clear his name. Uh, he's got a doctor's certificate stating that the medicine that he was suspended for is the correct um, uh, correct treatment for ADHD, which apparently what is what he has. Yeah. Right. So he's taken something that not only does not only is properly prescribed medication, he kind of needs that to work uh, anyway. Like if he wasn't taking that all the time, I imagine that he would be having a lot of problems day to day. Right. So he takes this stuff, he goes to work, does exactly what he's called, and then he gets suspended for it. So um, I hope that WWE does what they should do in this case, that they debunk the strike, cancel the suspension, and furthermore, they should compensate Rose for the time that he was suspended. That's what they should do. Yeah. They won't, but that's what they should (laughs) Um, and I feel really bad for Adam Rose because he is. I look at this guy and he's releasing all the documentation. He's re- he's releasing doctors' letters that have been sent to WWE. They really have no reason not to lift his suspension, but they are. But they're sticking to their guns. And I'm like, you should be paying this guy money. You should be apologising to him, and you're not. Real shame for the guy. I hope that WWE don't get uber defensive and like. Well, you know what? We kind of don't need you when you get back from your suspension, even though you are right. So after your contract's done, get a new bike. Fuck off. Because we don't like being proved wrong. But Matt, I don't know about you, and I hate to say it, it feels like it might end up going that way. Does it not? It definitely does, yeah. Well, it's going to go, well, we are WWE. Mm-hmm. Do we want? Yeah. Like, we have our wellness policy, and that happened. Yeah, I tell you what, if that happens, I hope, I hope that Adam Rose fire, I, I, Adam Rose fires them, um, sues him, takes him to court, if that's the case. In fact, he should already do it, he'll already do it now, even though he's a, I don't, that's even a more cool career suicide, but to moments, if you already want to make a statement, take him to court if they don't, if they don't take you back or they don't debunk the strike. Feel that strongly about it? You've got he's clearly mad. He's got all the documentation he needs. Yeah, send it to court. I'm sure they. I'm sure they'd be very happy to to talk about that in court. So, uh, sorry. I mean, Adam Rose's lawyers would be happy to talk about that in court. I imagine WWE's not so much, but there we are. Uh, Matt, have you watched Camp WWE? I haven't yet. You haven't yet. I want to. I tell you what, Matt. I I, I think the show's quite fun. I. Uh, a very at, for the only reason, at very least, is that it lets Vince McMahon use all the swear words he wishes he could still use on Raw every week. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vince McMahon is fucking awesome in this show, by the way. He vo- he voices. He's one of the only people that voices himself. In fact, he's like the main character that speaks the majority of the time. So he must have done like fucking tons of voiceover work. And you know what? He's pretty fucking good at it. I have to say he's actually pretty decent with his characters, obviously an over exaggeration of himself or as you can imagine, uh, just the that advert. It's like, I'm a chase, chase Cena. That's sexy, sexy Cena. It's like, yeah. so true. <laughs> How the WD universe views it. 
Yeah. I mean, it's just hard on for him. The visual of him like um, chasing Cena in the woods with two swords. Yeah, I'm pretty much on board for that. So uh, the animation style, funny enough, reminds me of a show I used to like a little bit. Called, uh, well, not a little bit. I like it, but it reminds me a little bit of a show called Undergrads. You, I guarantee you probably never heard of it because it's very fucking old at this point. It was very niche even when it came out where it's not fantastic, the animation quality, but it's got a bit of charm to it. You know, it's got a little bit. Uh, it's got you can tell a little bit of uh, a little bit of heart and soul was pumped into this. So I'm, I'm relatively short. Are they short episodes or? Yeah, twenty minute. Yeah, twenty minute. Like like the Family Guy and American Dad's twenty yeah. minutes long. So that's fine. Yeah, I, no, I'm I'm really happy with it. I actually I watched it with my wife and we were we were laughing quite a bit throughout it. So some people may not like the fact that you've got some of the people not voiced. Um, like for some reason they make Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin a kid that looks like he has cancer. I don't know why. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work. Uh, you'll watch it, Matt. It's not even so much that he's bald. They gave him a like, skin color that looks. I was like, that just doesn't. I've seen. Yeah, he's like really pasty. Yeah, it, I'm like, mm, I don't like that. But some of them are okay, you know. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and obviously, you've got Ric Flair, who voices himself having sex with bears. So. <laughs> Come on, guys. That's got to be enough to get you in right there. That's got to that's do it. So there we go. That's the news. Jesus Christ. That took us a long time to get through. Um, right, Matt, are you ready for some fan feedback? We're gonna have to, I like, was there, yeah. We're going to have to start speeding up throughout the show or we won't get it done on time. Jeez. James Bracken asks, what direction would we like Dean Ambrose to go in in the following months? And if we think a Cena versus Ambrose match has any potential in the future? Uh, Cena working with anyone has potential. Whether or not WWE choose to do it correctly is a completely different topic. So um, it does have potential, but still. Uh, Matt, what, what do you think with Ambrose? Because I feel he's get, he's kind of floundering a little bit now. What, what would you do with him? I don't know. It's tough, really. Um, I don't know what I'd do with him. He needs something, but I don't think what... well. I don't know. I think I think he has to go heel. Yeah, like I guess the 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 safest bet, really. Yeah, and I, I know that's quite a, like when everyone anyone says what direction was someone going, and then literally I'm just like, oh, just turn him. But this is a little bit more like the real money in Ambrose was always him being a heel. They just chose to give him a, a good face run. But let's be honest, that face run has not been everything it could have been. That match against Lesnar should have been his coming out party. And it oh, wasn't. yeah. Where it's just gone, I am fucking here to rage and destroy. That's the one thing, like, we were talking about it. Like, they should have done it in such a way that it's like, Lesnar's like, the hell is this guy? But no, Lesnar's like, yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 to be honest, it was, it was a wet fart of a match, let's be honest, right? Um... The last guy who had the same stigma as Dean Ambrose, where he is this um, upper mid-card guy who, whenever he gets to the main event, never seems to be able to win one. Funny enough, it's Ryback, right? He was yeah. a guy that had that same stigma. Look where that ended up with him. I don't want the same thing for Dean Ambrose. So I think the heel turn is one of the options available to him. The other way that you do it is that you keep him face, you start booking him like an underdog. Right, and I mean really start booking him like an underdog where you start building up like I'm talking about a six month story of him gradually getting better and getting wins against people that he shouldn't be and deciding, you know what, this is my drive. I'm gonna go for the title. It's title or bust, right? Title or I'm done, right? Because at this point, if I don't put everything on the line, I don't think I'm gonna win it, right? And you build him up like an underdog. But at the moment that's not really Especially the only guy from the shield who hasn't held the belt yet. Yeah. Yeah. Just have that as his driving force. Yeah, yeah. It could be like, you know what, I know that I'm starting to have the stigma that I can't win the big one. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna do, give it everything I can. I, so I'll you basically want to run Sami Zayn versus Neville? Sort of, yeah. Pretty much that storyline for him. Uh, if you want to do that. But the other way, Matt, is that you talk to him heel. But the thing is, I think... We've already just talked about this. We need the revival for that. What, for him to go heel? Well... I think the revival would be a good assistant. I think there would be a good faction with him for him to command them and stuff like that. Yeah, but we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. I actually think that Ambrose is in a lot of trouble personally, and the reason why I think that is because I think that 
he's floundering. I don't think WWE knows what to do with him. So he's been resorted to a comedy role sort of, of sorts, which it, to yeah. me is not where the money in Dean Ambrose is. So but there we are. Uh, Billy McGee says Shawn Michaels could induct China into the Hall of Fame. That's what we talked about last week. True. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a shame that China's relevancy in DX came more towards the end of DX, though, which is the, it's the only shame. Well, not the end of DX, the end of HBK being in DX, more importantly. But you know what? Out of anyone WWE, yeah, Billy, I think that's honestly probably the best choice you're going to get. And the thing is, one, one of the awkward things is that Let's say they do induct her and Shawn Michaels is the one to do it. You know, everyone's just going to be saying, why the fuck is Triple H not doing this? Like, he's the one most associated with her. But that's that's the problem there, isn't it? It's a minefield, but still. His actual question, however, is if we think uh, Renee Young should be put onto the NXT announce team. Uh, I've been very high on Renee Young. Still am. I've changed my view on her and announcing, though. Um, Isn't it as a result of the panels? It's not so much that I think she's been doing a bad job on those panels. I think she's spent so far... Like, when she was on commentary at NXT, she was slowly getting better. You know, it's like she was gradually improving as time went on. But then she spent, like, almost, like, 18 months away from that from that commentary desk at this point. Yeah. Right? She spent a very long time away from um, from commentary. To the point now where it's a little bit like all the stuff that she probably learned in terms of commentary, she's probably she's probably out of her system by now, yeah. right? Um, she, I think that path in her career was put on hold for too long. I'm sure she could do it, but she's always going to be, like primarily her skills are always going to be best, funny enough, in that pre-show role, you know? It's just that pre-show role that needs some work. And if you want to hear my thoughts on that, you can view the article on our Facebook page where I talked about how you could fix the pre-show with Renee Young being the anchor of that, of that, of that segment. Right. Mm. Um, I think if she wasn't hosting a panel as bad as what she is, I don't think she'd be faltering as much as she is now. And she shouldn't be interviewing people backstage personally. I think she should be like, they should, should treat her like a, she shouldn't be interviewing backstage. Sorry. I think there's a couple of people. She's one of two people who shouldn't be interviewing backstage. Moro Ronaldo being the other one. Yep. Yeah, I thought so. Um, she should be treated like a correspondent and not a backstage inter- interview. She be, should, should be treated like a correspondent. I know you because people might be saying, well, they're doing it now because it make, they may try and make it look as if she's seeking out people to interview them. I just want that shit to be done. I want her to be as if... Almost, they should treat her as if she's... While she's hired by the company, she really isn't. And the fact that, that she's basically reporting on them to a certain degree and she can do these shows and stuff like that, I just... That's how I feel it should be going. In terms of announced him, I think that ship has sailed. What about you, Matt? What do you think? I completely agree. Yeah, it's unfortunate though because she was doing well. Um, but I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't see her coming back and doing it in a big way, like you said. Mm. Oh, and uh, her going on to Total Divas is not my idea of what you do with Renee on either. But. Alas, that's what they're doing. So she wasn't. Anyway. Well, she, well, she has been, yeah. No, she is going to be one of the new Total Divas girls. They've already announced it. Um, no catch that. They're not even doing Total Divas anymore. Yes, they are. They're doing Total Divas and Total Bellas separately. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. We know you watch Total Divas now. Come I on. didn't know that. <laughs> I just assumed that was it. No. No, that's it. That's staying on. I don't think it will be on for much on, that much longer. I think Renee Young is there. She's only, Renee's only been on it because Brie keeps dragging her along to do silly hijinks. I think that's her introduction to the show, though. So her, she's going to be one of the... Thing I think I find quite funny, though. It, you can blatantly tell that Ambrose is not happy. No, he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Why would he give a shit? But there we are. Uh, Grizzy uh, loves listening to our podcast, as always. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. He says that the uh, League of Nations have split up now. What would we do with them going forward? I think this is a really tough question, Matt, because they're all really fucking stale. Yeah. Um, like, in a perfect world, I'd like them all to be pushed and given diverse roles, but are there better and more exciting talent around them that are newer? I think there is. Yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah. Um. Like, you've got Rusev in the US title hunt. 
It's a bit samey, whatever, but it's something. So, okay. Sheamus, I think they're going to end up using him as a mid-card heel that they can use as and if when they like, almost like Big Show. When they and maybe just him. sort of like bring him to a big fight if they need to. Yeah, right. Um, what would I like him to do? I don't know. To be honest, I've got to a point with him now. I kind of don't even want to see him. I just want to see newer talent in their place, which is yeah. a bit of a shame. Uh, Del Rio is another one that like, yeah, what you could do is like, oh, you can give him all of his stuff back, his cars, pyro suits, ring announcer. It would save him. It would save him. It's all been done. And what are they going to do with him with all that stuff put back on him that they haven't already done? I don't think they, they have any ideas, and that's why they haven't done it. Yeah. Um, you know what? Even better in the title, the the actual title. I think it's just sort of back to the problem of there being only the one belt. I don't know. I still like having that one belt. Though. I like having the one belt. Agreed. But mm. Like it's now the belt is now locked in with Reigns and AJ, and it will be for the next few months. Mm. So it's not even like oh, I would really like them to do like a main event sort of thing. Well, there isn't a main event. Because that's the belt. <laughs> yeah. You know what I would like? Funny enough, thinking of Del Rio, right? Because I know there's not much you can do with him now in terms of character. Um, listen, you need someone for a couple of months to step in a certain place and be a top-tier guy that can pull off a fantastic match. I, don't, I know you may not like it. Why don't you do a, a Tyson Kidd and send down to NXT? Hmm. Because... What would you the idea. Yeah, wouldn't you love to see Del Rio against Nakamura? Wouldn't you love to see Del Rio against Samoa Joe? Wouldn't yeah. you like to see Del Rio against a host of other guys they've now got down there? I think I would be up for that, right? So, And more so, you can't do it with Rusev because it would just seem like a demotion because he was an NXT alumni. Sheamus, I wouldn't be excited even if he did, even if he did show up at NXT. But Del Rio is one of those guys that I think people would enjoy matches that he could do with some of those guys yeah. down there. So. Yeah, put Del Rio back down in NXT. He would see it as a demotion, though. I don't think he would be happy with it. But ironically, I think it would breathe new life into his career with WWE. It's, I tell you what, even just the fact that I'm saying that, I mean, he hasn't even been back that long, let's be honest. Like, breathe new life into the man's career, man. He, he was dead like a month after he came back. That's, that's a real shame. I want him to go back to Lucha. Yeah, but he's, he's not. I don't care. I want him to. Yeah. I didn't have to see him as often, and when I did see him, it was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lucha Underground was quite fun, throwing uh, Johnny Mundo through windows and shit. So yeah. I did uh, <laughs> I felt really bad. I did a Kim Kardashian joke on my Lucha Underground episode where I said that Derek Cueto's office gets destroyed more than Kim Kardashian's lady parts. <laughs> I feel I feel a bit bad for saying that, but in the same breath. It's kind of true, right? So, yeah. yeah. Axel Diaz asks if we heard about Ring of Honor thinking of buying TNA. Uh, I've heard of Sinclair Broadcasting thinking about buying TNA. So it's not the same thing. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) Sinclair Broadcasting has a stake in in ROH. Um, I'm sure a few parties are interested. It's not ROH stumping up the money themselves and, and assimilating TNA. I don't think they would have the money for it personally, but. Um, I don't think that just because a company may be interested in purchasing TNA, one, that they actually will, and two, that they're interested in rebuilding TNA. I think what they might want is its contracted wrestlers, yeah, uh, TV slots, and then they might build up a new show. Um, that's what I think they would be much more likely in doing, but. Uh, I don't know. TNA, they can re-sign as many of their talent and put up on their Facebook as much as you like, but it, I, I feel bad me just constantly keep bringing it up because at the end of the day, people know my thoughts on the company. I'm not I'm not happy with them, so it is what it is. Um, I think I, I actually saw like a Twitter uh, a Twitter exchange between a couple of fans. Where one of them was like, all these people keep thinking the TNA's dying, and someone summed it up perfectly with a response going, they're not really alive either, though, let's be honest. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much exactly the where they are at the moment. They're in they're in the middle between being alive and dead. Yeah. Let's just be honest. So uh Anthony Smash asks if we think Baron Corbin will be a jobber. Matt, do you think Baron Corbin will be a jobber? 
I don't want him to be. But I have think to, he will. There was no. I t- there was that battle royal earlier. Mm, mm, yeah. I I don't think he's going to be a jobber. That's my guess. I don't want him to be one. I think he hasn't been used well, but I think his height and his presence will save him from a fate like that. But I have to be honest in saying that, that I am a little bit worried about the guy. I honestly didn't think he would be booked as badly to start off with. Yeah. Um, I thought it was quite easy. Unfortunately, he has been. Yeah, I thought it was quite easy what you do to this guy. You, you put him in there with a smaller guy. You watch him do his thing, and he annihilates them, gets the pin, comes out like a badass. They done. haven't done that. <laughs> they, they, they haven't even got him off to a good start. I think after WrestleMania, it's all got a bit downhill for the guy. It's a shame, because I do actually like Corbin. I actually think he's quite good. But no, I don't think he'll become a jobber. But Matt, it's a little bit worrying, is it not? I'm not, I'm not exactly going against Anthony here and saying... Uh, oh, why would you even ask this question? I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that, and they're not exactly wrong to be thinking it either. But oh, it's awkward. I know you're a, you're a Corbin fan as well. I'm a you Corbin know, fan, yeah. You turned it all around in NXT. I don't want him to to be the, the Tyler Breeze again. But there we are. Uh, Matt, let's talk about NXT for a little bit. Have you watched NXT this week? No. Nope. Well, I was... not anything. I've literally got like the bare minimum so we can talk about these things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, I'll talk a little bit about it anyway. Eric Young debuted. Uh, as far as we know, he's not signed a proper contract with the company. He's on like an appearance basis like James Storm. Yeah. Now, I will say, however, uh, I've had my thoughts on EY. I said I, I don't, I'm not his biggest fan. Um, I don't think he's that big of a star. I think he's a little bit overrated, personally. But that's just my my thoughts on the guy. I thought that the start of this show felt way too much like TNA. So it starts off with Samoa Joe doing his thing, which is fine. He's a great heel. Then you get Eric Young comes out. And they end up having a match later on. And then the match afterwards has Austin Aries in it. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, hmm... Yeah, that's that's a little bit worrying right there, right? The you can TNA take over. Yeah, and then then you realize this you realize this week as well that they just signed Bobby Roode to do a, a fucking UK tour with NXT as well. So, yeah, the takeover is real. <laughs> I saw a great kayfabe news article that this is a grand plan by Dixie Carter to assimilate NXT. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's brilliant. Loads of sleeper agents. Uh, another guy I want to talk about a little bit, Matt, is Ty Dillinger. Uh, he had a match this week. I'll tell you what, something clicked with me in Ty Dillinger this week. I'm feeling a lot more on this guy's side than I ever have. I was going to say, was it a perfect 10? I'm looking at this guy, Matt, and I'm like, he's got the gimmick down, clearly, and it's getting responses from fans. He's a decent wrestler. I think it's time to stop using him as a jobber and start to actually put it with stock in the guy. Personally, I'm like, this guy's got something with this. I wasn't totally 100% behind the gimmick when it started, but he's making something of it. So, you know what? I'll be watching it very carefully. I hope that they, I mean, now, of all the times, they need some people to step up and start claiming their spots. Hopefully, Ty Dillinger ends up becoming one of those guys. I know his age may be a problem, but come on. You get five years out of him until he's 40. You can do something with him until then, surely. So I think that's fine. But a little bit a little bit of love there to Ty Dillinger. Go on, mate. I hope you do it. All right, Matt. Are you ready for your super sexy, amazingly difficult, but intense, awesome challenge? I am ready. You are ready? Oh. Well, this week's uh, topic is wrestling's weirdest matches. Now, I will need for you to give me both participants of the match, okay? Okay. And in certain instances, when it calls for it, I need you give, to give me the stipulation of that match, okay? Right. Are you ready? Five questions. I suppose. Yes. I think this week is a bit tough, I will have to say. I think it's a more on the difficult side. So here we go. Number one. 
These two wrestlers found it hard to rise to the task when it came to Tory Wilson. So whoever won this match found themselves more than just stiff competition. <sighs> Viagra on a pole match. Okay, you got one. Who was in it? Oh, but who was in it? Fuck. Oh, I don't remember. You don't remember who was in it? I do not. Do you want to hazard any guess? I I would have thought one of these guys you would have got straight away. Yeah, but I can't remember. Oh. I'm so struggling. Do you give up? Oh. Kidman? It is Billy Kidman. Okay, just one one other guy. Who does he wrestle? I don't think you'll get this one. No. No. Shane Douglas. The franchise. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, they they fought for uh for Viagra. Um yeah. You'd have thought WCW would have paid them enough to <laughs> get it themselves. <laughs> Clearly not. Uh with just a brown bottle with Viagra like paste yeah. in the front of it. Just black marker pen. Yeah. Uh anyway, moving on to number two. These two male wrestling legends harness their more feminine side as they tore items oh, of clothing off one another. Oh, it must stooges. All right, let me do the full thing for the benefit of our fans. These two male wrestling legends has- harness their more feminine side as it tore items of female clothing off one another. It must suck being one of Vince's cronies. Yeah. Who was it though? What was the match? Absolutely. Like? Okay. Oh. Uh, it was like an evening gown match or something. There it? you go. That's the stipulation. But who did Pat Patterson fight? <sighs> who was the other crony? Oh, who was the other crony? <laughs> I think you can get this map. I think you can get it. <sighs> this match, by the way, just for everyone knowing, don't go look on it. Uh, look at this on the network. It's fucking awful. It is so. Oh, Richard. Huh? Yeah. I say, oh, oh, come on, mate! You gotta get this. No, no, oh, it was Gerald Briscoe. It was, it was. Patterson and Briscoe. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame, Matt. You've been so close. You've only been able to miss one person. I was falling short on the other participant. Yeah. Okay. Number three. This female wrestling legend made history by capturing a major championship in a match that may have reminded her of a stereotypical female environment. Who Okay. Once more. This female wrestling legend made history by capturing a major championship in a match that may have reminded her of a stereotypical female environment. She won a major title. I'll give you a hint. What you may be considering as major today may not, you know, you know, like what you may consider may not have been major today, may have been major back then. The only thing is I've literally got in my mind is a bra and panties match. That's not. That's not a stereotypical female environment. Well, it depends on what sort of females you... you depends what era about. we're talking about. <laughs> Stereotypical era. Not that era. Female environment. I'm going to help you along. Who was the one of the only women to capture a major championship? China. Okay, that's one. Who did she wrestle to beat for that championship? Who did she beat for the title? And they've been putting it everywhere recently. <laughs> it has been everywhere, yeah. It was actually a clip on WWE that they put up this week about it. That's where I got the idea. No? I think I might have to... I think I might have to... I might have to call it. No? No. No. It's China versus Jeff Jarrett in a good housekeeping match. Where she won. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, that was the match that she first captured the IC Championship. So, yeah, there you are. Uh, number four. 
This wrestling showstopper teamed with a powerful being to take on WWE's monopolizing father and son duo. Oh, Shane and God. Not Shane, Sean and God versus Shane and Vince. <laughs> there you go, you got it. I was like, no. <laughs> there, um, you go. That's no that, there was no stipulation on that match. No, there wasn't. No. Uh, remember, that was when they just shone a beam of light that came down the to the ring. The best promo. <laughs> Like, I loved the, the promo in the church. That was the best. <laughs> I love that Vince has basically used it as a way just to basically just diss on anyone that's religious at all. Just like, <laughs> like, I don't think you should be doing this. Well, if he's got a problem with it, he can smite me down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome stuff. All right, then. you got one. Let's try and get two, Matt. Let's try and get two. Number five. These two guys found themselves fighting in a WWE match surrounded by dogs shitting themselves around a cage. Oh, I had... Oh. Yet again, it's another one of those matches where recently I was hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. Who was in it? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. That this match was created because one of the guys fed and the other guy his own dog. <laughs> Kane. No. You're Kane? Wrong. Completely wrong. No. <laughs> Kane didn't get fed or feed anyone anyone their I dog. Just, I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'll go. All right, I'll, God. I'll it's, call it's it. Just messed up. <laughs> It was Al Snow versus Big Boss Man in the Kennel from Hell match. And if you remember, they wanted it so like you had loads of the dogs outside and they were supposed to look really menacing. Rabbit. Yeah, they were meant to be rabid, but they were just like, nah, I was too busy licking my balls. You yeah, licking my nuts, going to sleep, or having a nice big fucking dump, which is exactly what they did. All of them could not give a fuck that they were in the middle of a wrestling match. So there you are. So you've got one out of five this week, Matt. It was tough. Was so it was close. Tough so close you were so close on like three of them there so um good 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 work there matt uh it is super sexy amazingly difficult but intense awesome challenge so there we are i know a couple of the guys in the chat have been getting clean five out of fives each week you guys know your wrestling trivia Lying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what wiki's for you ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> all right then matt we've got a raw review to get through let's do that now shall we so we're about to get through this uh, sort of quicker. In fact, I've lost track of time. I don't even know how much time we have left on the show. I don't so, know how long we've been going for? No, neither have I. Uh, so, we're fresh off payback. We're now starting the road to extreme rules. We're starting the story of sibling rivalry between Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon. Feels like we've already done this before, but at the very least, it's something different than the authority. So, there, there is that. Emanated from St. Louis, Missouri the home place of a certain Randy Orton. There was no Randy Orton return. He's actually going to be out for a lot longer than I think a lot of people were thinking. Apparently (laughs) all the news about him is that he's not coming back for a long time because his recovery has kind of stalled. (laughs) Ever. I'm sure he'll come back at some point. I know. (laughs) The thing is though, who was the last person that started having troubles getting back from injury? Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he ended up having to retire quite recently. Mr. Daniel Bryan. The show starts off with Stephanie coming down. She doesn't say much until Shane comes down. Stephanie has a present for Shane. It's the picture that Vince had smashed uh, prior to WrestleMania, reminding us all that Vince's harsh words only last as long as the current storyline goes on for. He wants to... uh, So payback show stealer Kevin Owens comes down. He's so beautifully condescending, saying, oh, look, you're so happy working together. Oh, look at that. He has an idea for Raw. He wants a match for the Intercontinental Championship. He's not holding his breath for Shane to give him the title shot, so he gives it to, He pleads to Stephanie instead, saying that he is owed, entitled. He essentially just tongues her ass for a bit. and just like, Steph, you know it, deserve it. Give me yeah. the fucking belt. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Well, he's got a point, right? He's got contractual he rematch. Yeah. So there is that. Uh, Cesaro then comes out, and I'm like, this is sort of becoming one of those promos again, yeah. where someone comes out, someone comes out. I really dislike them. Shane tells them to wrestle, and whoever wins will be the number one contender for the IC title. So Shane just doesn't give a shit about contracts. He's just like, well, I don't give a fuck. 
It's not as if it's like my name on it. It was Vince back then. So take up with him. So yeah. here we are. That leads to the first match, Cesaro versus Owens. You've got Miz on commentary. Maurice as yeah, well. Yeah, just fucking... Uh... Here's the thing, though, with Maurice on commentary. She's so quiet that it's basically impossible to actually hear her. She, d- she didn't pipe up at all. So Miz, you know, he's just generally loud anyway, right? He's loud even if he's not trying to be. But Maurice is just trying to give her offhanded comments, but she's so quiet. I'm like, what the fuck did she say? I, I didn't even hear it. That's so, nice that. Uh... Good match, though. I will say, Matt. Good match. Of course it was a good match. Nice. Look who was in it. Yeah. Uh, an interaction with the Miz causes a DQ for Cesaro. Zane comes out for the save. He hits Owens with a halluva kick, tries to give one to the Miz, but Maurice gets him out of the way. And then Zane raises the IC title in the air. Now, if, if there's one, if there's one guy, I think you can get close to getting the fans behind him, similar similar to the way that Daniel Bryan did. I think Zane is that guy. There's something about him, Matt, that makes you just want to root for him, makes you want to get behind him. I think it's probably because he's very he's got a very common man look. Do you know one thing I'm not really liking his gear recently? And his gear's fine. Yeah, it looks all right. I still just prefer the um oh, I still prefer his other gear. Like the original stuff that he had. With all the it flags was, and everything. Yeah, right? I love that one. Yeah. Uh well at the end of the day, Matt, it could be a lot worse. He could be wearing a Lucha Dragons gimp suit, so it's very yeah. true. Could always be worse. Could always be worse. Uh, Stephanie speaks to Dean backstage. He's going on about, oh, you know, this whole happy facade is just that. It's a facade. And with her smiling and them having a back and forth, it just felt like they were flirting. It did sort of like, yeah, sort of like, <laughs> just, just, there's, a, there's a locker room there. Just, just, just get it over with. <laughs> Go on, go on. Steph tells Ambrose that she can be his guest on the Ambrose Asylum later on in the night, and he's a, he's free to ask her anything. So, okay. Tyler Breeze and R Truth are backstage. R Truth has a stick attached to a phone that is smashed. He wants to team up with them, with, with, team up with Breeze, calling himself the Gorgeous Truth. I have to ask him. Funny, right? Humor, laugh at it. Yeah, well, that was basically WWE in the background, yeah. But Matt, here's the thing. I know that our truths not completely there in the head, right? His character's not exactly... He's a few pineapples short of a picnic, right? Uh, but Man, the... That's the terrible. That's a worse analogy. <laughs> it's just the way that my dad always used to say it to me. Pineapples right? short of a picnic? I, I don't know. Yeah. A few pork pies short of a picnic. How about that one? Yeah. All right, all right, there you go. Um, Who takes a pineapple to a picnic? Well, maybe you need to expand your horizons, Matt, okay? Why don't you go to Puerto Rico and soak in the local cuisine, okay? Oh, God, I'm becoming one of them. You become a Puerto Rican. I'm having sex with the Puerto Rico flag right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just the idea. Oh, God, I don't want to go. Actually, no, I'm going too far with that. Stop that. Nip that shit in the bud. Uh, um, So... Why would the, why, why would the holy hell would you pick Tyler Breeze to be your partner? His win loss ratio is fucking appalling. He hasn't won a match in fucking months, apart from this show where he actually won a match. But that's the kind of point, right? That he hasn't won, he hasn't won basically anything. Golda shows up. More awkward comedy ensues. I'm hard pressed to even call it comedy, even though it's failed. Uh, apparently, Goldust's new partner is Fandango. I tell you what, Matt. It must suck shopping for tag partners as a low carder. You know, like when you when you're when when the top of the picks that is available to you is Tyler Breeze and Fandango, you know you're not in a very good place in the card. Yeah, Let, let's be honest with you. But there we are. Styles is speaking to Gallows and Anderson in the locker room. They're telling him, "Oh, you were so good at payback. You were just so close to winning the championship." Styles is like, "Well, you know, I'm so close, but now I'm even hungrier. Now I, I need that championship, right?" Uh, there's no way that Reigns is going to leave Extreme Rules with the championship. But talk of the man and the booze shall signal his arrival, as they do. So it's like when you get a king that comes up, you know you've got his court that come out with the, the trumpets and everything. Du, 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 du. <laughs> I'm the king. Yeah, with Reigns, he comes in, the booze precede him now. It's It's got that bad. Reigns says he has respect for Styles, but not for Gallows and Anderson. And he wonders if the three of them can beat him and the Usos. And that's a match I said I'd be interested in seeing, so I'm glad we'll at least we get to see that at the main event. 
Tyler Breeze versus Goldust. It is sad, Matt, how little response every single guy involved in this got. Yeah. Uh, To the point that people are actually booing Goldust when he spends the majority of the match just shouting at R-Truth. When I say majority, I mean about five seconds because the match wasn't very long at all. So there you are. Uh, Breeze uses the most devastating move in wrestling history to claim an extremely rare victory for himself. Uh, That has to be his first raw victory. I can't even remember the last time he had a victory on Raw. I, I know he hasn't. No, he hasn't had a victory. I was going to say. I think, you, I think you were right in saying that has to be his first Raw victory. That's his first Raw victory in 2016. I'm pretty sure of that. So, only took him five five and a bit months. Yes, somehow, mate. I, <laughs> I don't think WWE are helping you too much, but um, that horse is dead at this point with us. New day out. They talk about Enzo Amore's injury. Big E fluffs his lines a bit, but the crowd loves his line. It loves him anyway. They don't care if he loves I love the him. fact that he's just like, I've, re- I've recovered it. Yeah, I've recovered it. And yeah. sort of like, just like, ha ha. You know what? Matt? If the crowd did start shitting him on it anyway, he would just touch, shout, start shouting at them that he's their daddy. So, yeah, if in doubt, daddy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know they have abilities to make people twerk on command. I'd like to think that I'd be able to hold them off with that, but you know, he might just shout at me, I'm your daddy, I'm the stew sexual chocolate. And I'd probably be like, okay, I'll do it. And I'd just start, I'm sorry, daddy. I'm crying while twerking just for his own benefit. But there we are. Uh, how sad that sounds. Jeez. Uh, Aiden English uh, and Simon Gott show up. Aiden English says um, that a real man would have gotten back up. Real men like them. You know, because they are manly. Simon Gotch says that they made Enzo Amore the realest guy in the emergency room. I actually like that line. I was like, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, the Dudleys come out. As I said at the pay per view recording, I did say that I thought they probably would be making an appearance if Enzo hadn't got injured, especially with them arriving here. I think that's pretty much assured that that would have been yeah. the case. Bubba Ray says that they beat nobody, the ref stopped the match. So I equate that to Bubba. That means they did win the match by referee stoppage. That's what it means. Yeah. I love Enzo and Cass, but if the referee like, has to stop the match because one of the them ref- can't continue. Like, especially considering, like, you know, there's been those few times where Bubba's had to like shout at the referee. Like, you remember that during that tables match, like that's how you finish a match. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of that thing all over again. Mm-hmm. Considering mm-hmm. it's like, he had to stop the match. Yes. That's how matches stop. Yeah. And you don't watch Kevin we Owens against Sami Zayn. If someone has to be carted off. Oh, NXT, not... a title changed hands because of that. Yeah. I wish there was more referee stoppage um, finishes in wrestling. I really do. But still, they want the tournament to be restarted. Big Cass comes, uh, comes out. Even without Enzo, he's still far more over than Roman Reigns could ever hope to be. Yeah. So. There you are. In fact, even without Enzo, he's still like the second most over commodity in <laughs> in the area at that point. Yeah, really. To be honest, he is. Uh, he's um, he's out there to avenge his fallen brother, and that reminds the Dudleys that he already beat them. You know, a brawl ensues, an eight man tag match starts up, which happens next. All you need is just Teddy Long to be out there going tag team match. That's the no, hold on a player. That's not how it's going to go down. <laughs> I miss Teddy Long, man. I do. I do miss Teddy Long. Uh, so, yeah, that match happens. Interesting to see that you've got Bubba Ray and Devon barking out orders and tips. Um, taking I loved it. it. It's like, this is how you do it. And you hold him and then you face swipe. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, just, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> do it like that. But, you know, one of the best positives of having that team back on the books is the invaluable advice they can give to teams like the Board Villains. Um, I'm not just talking about in terms of storyline. I mean, actual backstage, they can give these guys fucking decades of experience with yeah. advice. Uh, that's the part of the reason why I'd have them around. Uh, I tell you what, like after they're done, I'd just send those guys down to NXT to work with the tag teams down there to get them, you know, give them some real solid coaching. So there is that. Uh, the best hot tag in WWE is Jason Jordan without question. 
And there was a point in this match where they do the hot tag with Xavier Woods and they do the hot tag again with Kofi Kingston. And I'm like, in an, a big eight-man tag match, Matt, wouldn't you love Jason Jordan to be fucking throwing suplexes like a monster? Just everyone. Oh. Didn't win what you need. He's a, he is the best tag, hot tag in pro wrestling. It's Jason Jordan. Everyone, everyone comes, comes unglued when that guy gets tagged in. It's brilliant, but still, I could agree with that. I, it's, I think it's a, a um, I think it's all to do with the moment, how they build up. I think Cass can be a big, pretty big hot tag. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you with that. I just think that the way that um, Gable was so good at. Uh, doing a lengthy run in the ring and uh, taking a beating. He takes a beating pretty well, doesn't oh, he? Yeah. Now, when it comes time and he puts the straps down and he does this stuff, um, it's... And he uh, goes to Suplex City. Yeah. There is there is two mayors now. So Brock Lesnar has got a new candidate he needs to run against for, Suplex, for mayor of Suplex City. It's Jason Jordan. He's got a, he's got a, good, he's got a good case right there. To be fair, I hear Becky Lynch is running for it as well. Oh, yeah. Well, there she you go. has a pretty damn good case on the suplexes yeah she uh not only just the exploder map we've seen a couple of germans here and there so that's yeah. nice big cast picks up the victory with a move that cole called the east river crossing i get the reason why that's the name but if that is the name change it it's shit i don't like it so, Agreed. um yeah i get it east river crossing i get i get the whole location of it and, and whatever it's still shit change it that's it. Becky- I understand the reference. I still don't like it. Yeah, I still don't like it. Still doesn't work for me. Becky Lynch versus Emma. JPL immediately uh, sexist right off the bat by saying that... Sexist? Bro- racist. Racist, sorry. Yeah, it is racist, not sexist. Off the bat by saying both women just talk funny. And I'm like, that's what not even the being difference. a good commentator. They all talk funny. It's like, yeah. But like, international enough. company here, J- John. Don't be a dick. Some people are going to fire back and say he's a heel commentator, guys. He's meant to get heel. He's meant to get heel for the heel, right? He's supposed to get like, um, like he's supposed to get heat for the heel, which is Emma. Surely you'd go or Becky Lynch. Uh, we all know that the, the Aussies of uh, you know the, are far superior and whatever like this. You know, he's just like, oh, both of them just talk funny. I'm like, that's just being fucking stupid, right? Right there, like, stop it. Slow match. This picks up to what towards the end but even then the crowd was struggling to get into it uh although i thought the match itself was okay emma gives her the thumb to becky's eye a mishinoku driver and pins her wins the match um they tell us that apparently becky lynch's eye is injured i only knew that when they said it was injured yeah apparently yeah well yeah it happened at mania well i only remember the pictures I don't know, but they uh, at very that's, least... That's, that was the problem, is the fact that you were kind of relying on the fact that it's like, hey, I hope you keep watching all of our backstage segments, otherwise you wouldn't have known. But I know, like, fair enough. If it happens with her eye still bruised and battered, fair enough. And if commentary are playing up that eye, must, you know, that eye is still giving her problems, they never did throughout the case of the match. It was only just at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah she has an injured eye. And I'm like, well, it looks fucking healed. So I don't like, you know, it doesn't look like yeah, there'll be a problem. <laughs> But still, uh, I hope they have plans for Becky Lynch. I think they do. I think this is just a stopgap um, rivalry for her. Um, but you look at Becky Lynch and Emma and thinking they could do something really good with these girls. And I hope they do, but I just don't see it happening. Here we go. Another Epico and Primo video package. With them talking about how great Puerto Rico's food is, the local cuisine. I think, Matt, it is ludicrous how these guys have got to... Well, they're probably going to get about 10 separate video packages for like their third reboot. Yet some NXT stars come up. They don't even get one. Yeah. I think that's fucking ridiculous. And no, no offense to Epico and Primo, but there are teams down NXT that are more entertaining than you. And yeah, you're good in the ring, but you're kind of done. If you, if you, if you come to, if by your third repackage, if you haven't connected with the audience at that point, I think there's something seriously wrong at that point. I think that WWE should be looking at them and instead of giving them tons of video packages and be like, you know what? We'll really put our effort in this team. I'm like, why? <laughs> like, why? It's the point. You're like, wasting your time. The very idea of the gimmick doesn't make any sense. If they love Puerto Rico so much, why are they going to a company that, that is going to damn near make sure that they never go to Puerto Rico because they're going to be traveling too much? I'm like, what? It 
makes no fucking sense. Stay in Puerto Rico then, if you like it so much. Get my fucking TV. I just think it's stupid. I'm not on board with this at all. And I'm like, these guys are getting weekly vignettes, um, clearly with uh, with some production value put on them. And I'm like, but why? Why? Like, with production value and just surely the cost alone, just sort of like, yeah, we're just going to spend a week in Puerto Rico. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Film... Like high quality, yeah, like you said, like high quality vignettes, and that's like mm, goody. You could think they could have taken one of the the current teams and done something with them with that money to enhance them, rather than okay, Epic and Primo, let's give them another gimmick, let's give them another try. And I'm like, guys, if it's not going to work by now, then maybe you should pick and find guys that are more naturally charismatic. Sorry, I'm I I like Epic and Primo; they're nice guys. I'm sure, and they've got some skills in that ring. But I'm saved, like, they could have saved the ascension. I think they're gone dead they by that. Well, one of them's well, one of them's gone anyway. Anyway, they so. could have saved them. Uh, but you know what I mean here, you know. But still, there we are. I sound uh, like a proper sad little child then. It's like, <laughs> oh, the ascension! But they could have saved them. I want to imagine you were doing this podcast with like a Connor and Victor like action figure, and you're like, like they could have done something. <laughs> <laughs> Just hugging them. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear! Uh, but proper so Connor and Victor, none of this like mock off Road Warrior bullshit. No, no. The NXT Ascension back when they were basically unstoppable. But yeah, the Ambrose Asylum. Oh, so apparently Ambrose's potted plant has a name. It's Mitch, and TMZ broke a story about Mitch this week. Apparently, he's been having a sordid affair with Francesca. So I'm sure WWE weren't too happy with that. They might write him off storylines for a while. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie is still happy Steph even though Ambrose doesn't buy it I'm like why not maybe you know she's really stressed out with this whole Shane thing she took a couple of happy pills before she came out she could be high as fuck for all we know right <laughs> swagged a bit of the friendly weed you know she's like you know what, a major executive of a, of a billion dollar corporation why not every now and then just, just a bit of a bit I of mean, a I'm pretty sure she knows when the, uh, when the drug tests are on that way. Yeah, she's not a talent. She doesn't have to get a take piss tests and everything like that. So, you know what? Like, I reckon, sure. she, reckon they probably do. You know, I can imagine a staff backstage in an office just doing a bong while Vince comes and she's trying to get under the table. Like, sure, sure, Dad, I'll be right <laughs> like he's there. Like she's like a little teenager being caught out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like oh, sat, sat on the windowsill, leaning out the window. <laughs> like, yeah. Shit. In Stanford, Connecticut, just like one of the, one of the only w- windows open that's got smoke bellowing out of it. They don't just know like what. going at it with Febreze. Just... <laughs> oh dear, love it. Uh, you know why? It's because I've been watching Orphan Black, and one of the characters in that ends up becoming like a drug dealer, even though like she's one of these pent up house mums and shit. So it's like I can just imagine Stephanie a side story that Stephanie's actually a drug addict and she's just been smoking a fucking shit ton of weed, and that's that's the only reason why she's been happy. And they just run with it. They, 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 the people are like getting so pissed off. Like, why is she so happy? There seems to be no story that it just comes out that she's been smoking fucking tons of weed. <laughs> so she's just been so happy. She's like, you know it's what? Like next week she's going to come out in like her attire is going to be black, red, yellow, and green. <laughs> and she's got like sunglasses on to fuck out her eyes. That's it. <laughs> oh dear. See, that's why we should book Stephanie with Mad. That she'd have a much more fun time on Raw now. Eh? People might even be on her on, on her side. You know. Knowing that she's smoking pot like the majority of the of the world, but I just don't want to admit it. But there we go. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh dear, I'm just imagining how. Moving Stephanie- on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ambrose brings up how Stephanie must feel aggrieved with her constant years of work with WWE, the control of the company, which is handed over to Shane. And she says, "Well, sometimes things just need change. Like this show, for example, it just needs to be cancelled." So she cancels it. And Ambrose takes Mitch. Jericho is brought out to host a highlight reel. Both men end up brawling, but you know what? Talk shows are worth fighting for, damn it. You know? Because I really care about who has a talk show on this show. Yes, I really do. Sarcasm. Um, move- <laughs> so the ultimate yeah, thing. I think. Yeah. Uh, Jericho lays out Ambrose with the code breaker. Then Matt, he does the unthinkable to write Mitch off of television for that sordid of affair with Francesca. He gets injured by being smashed over Ambrose's head. Mitch is injured. Uh, is kayfabe injured? He's been put on the list. Uh, I'm sure that the next set of releases, Mitch will be released as well. So 
liked it. Uh, it's a bit sad, but this is what you, when you have a sword at a fair with a, with a trombone, this sort of shit happens. So, you know. however, I'd like to give full props to Kayfabe News because they did that like a champs. Well, what thing did they do with that? I didn't I even know. know that Mitch is going to be now on TNA. <laughs> what would his name be though? I wonder. I think they just name. changed it to Mitchell. Mitchell, yeah. What is Mitchell doing in the impact? It's, it's about as original as what the horn swoggle is now going around as. <laughs> swoggle, yeah. Swoggle. Uh, he did a WWE to himself. He cut off part of his name. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, then. We're having too much fun doing the show, man. <laughs> Just the idea of Steph being really addicted to weed brilliant stuff battle royale for the number one contender you know what matt i should just put a picture of i should you know i'm really good at photoshop i should just put stephanie with a fucking with a fucking spliff in her hands or something just like <laughs> shits and gigs uh battle royale for number one contender for the united states championship titus o'neill makes his raw return after being suspended for touching Vince McMahon. please put on this picture exactly where the titus o'neill touched you they show footage of the League of Nations finally dying. They've also changed Corbyn's white light to red. Did you not notice that last week? No, I didn't. I noticed it this week. Okay. I like it. I like it. Fair enough. I'm like, that's, it kind of looks like the wolf spilling blood a little bit. That's how I looked at it anyway. So yeah. Yeah, good stuff. I like that. And plus, it's not nearly as blinding as having white light just burned into your eyes. It's a little bit less obnoxious on, on, on the visual. Kalisto is on commentary. He is fucking awful at it. Right? Oh, he's terrible at it. He's absolutely. Just the amount of moments you sort of forget that like Kalisto was even there. Yeah. Uh, it's to a point, Matt, that I'm like, why would they even do it? You're supposed to highlight someone's strengths, not highlight their weaknesses. And clearly speaking is one of Kalisto's weaknesses. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just sit him up on a chair watching the match. Don't strap a headset to him. That's, like, that's what I would have done. Corbin gets eliminated by Ziggler. So Corbin uh, beats him out on the outside. Helps with... Um, Wins help new talent, loses damages in damages in uh, damages in damages them. I'll get there in the end. It's as black and white as that. So if Corbin keeps losing, he just won't get over. It's easy as that. Wins and losses do matter, ladies and gentlemen. I don't quite like that he just sort of like attacked to that sort of extent and then just sort of like, oh yeah, but I know he's not eliminated, so there you go. Mm. Go on, Rusev, you do it. Yeah, Rusev was more than happy to oblige. It feels weird that these guys would be working so hard, Matt, fighting tooth and nail for a pre-show title shot. Because that's basically what the US title has devolved back into now. The yeah. US Championship, without question, is the worst championship in WWE at the moment. Yeah. And that includes NXT. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Still, it boils down to the League of Nations members and Zack Ryder. But, of course, the League of Nations now are no longer, so they keep fighting each other. And it ends up being Rusev and Ryder. But, come on, guys, we know where this finishes. Because WWE love teasing that Ryder um, might get somewhere and they might take him seriously. Just at the last moment, they go, nah, Rusev wins it instead. <laughs> oh, you little scam. You thought Ryder. <laughs> Fucking Zack Ryder. Why do you think we're going to let you have some fun with him? They built it well. They did. I will say that. Um, if you're trying to get Rusev over as a heel, then Ryder's probably, probably like the perfect guy to go over him on here. I'm only joking. Because they are, well, the thing is, they are. He is over. It's really bizarre that he's still over. Who? Um, Ryder. Ryder. Yeah. It's, it's, I still think he's got residual fan support from the fucking Z True Long True Long Island story. He comes across as a guy who, you know, you want to see succeed. Not as much as Sami Zayn, but still, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, Lana comes out after the match to celebrate. Matt, she looked fucking smoking hot as she came out here. I was like, oh, girl, fuck me. That is, that's some good stuff right there. Rusev just shouts at Kalisto and then hugs Lana because he's a lucky son of a bitch. So am I. I have a great wife. And so are you, Matt, because you have a great girlfriend. I just want to add that in there, you know? Because people might be thinking when I go, oh, this guy's a lucky guy. I'm like, because I feel like I want to? No. He's a lucky guy for being with an attractive woman. So are we for being with attractive women. It's the way it goes. Yeah. He might be thinking that I've just been castrated by my wife and that's why I'm putting that there. No, that's me precursoring a castration that may come day, day later on down the line. See, that's how you become a good husband. All right. You plow the fucking ahead when you say these things. All right. 
Matt, that's my piece know, of advice. I Iron Man 2 the other day, and it's very much, you know, that bit with Scarlett Johansson and Tony Stark's mm-hmm. like, I want one. You know, like, I want one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still, going forward from this uh, minefield, but still. Uh, <laughs> that's like a little bit of advice from Uncle Tony to all the other listeners right there. You know, this is how you how you navigate the minefield of relationships. I've been there. I've learned all the tricks of the trade. Listen to Uncle Tony. Matt might tell you not to because I may lead you astray, but don't listen to him. He has logic. He is anyway, the prophet. Yeah. <laughs> Charlotte versus Ric Flair is out. Versus Ric Flair. <laughs> what am I talking about? Man, this has got so late and I'm so sick that my mind is starting to shut down. I need to get the show over and done with. Charlotte and Ric Flair are out. They say that there's no controversy regarding the Montreal screw job finish at Payback. Uh, they invite Little Nate himself to come out and they explain what. Do you know what I really liked? The fact that they showed the little video packages of him as <laughs> being Little Nate. I like, completely I forgotten that he actually so wrestled good. matches as yeah. Little Nate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he has his own robe and everything. That's fantastic. That really is. Um, but yeah, and obviously um, there's Charles Robinson says, oh, well, Natalia was, she was saying, no, no, stop, stop. So I called them, I called off. She didn't tap out but she gave up. So whatever. Uh, they're doing this with Charles Robertson is basically like the corrupt referee here that he loves the flair so much that he gave a little bit of leeway to them. At this well, point. I think it's just that they're going on with the sort of thing that the blood had run from his head to his penis for his Ric Flair hard on. Yeah. It's not even that he's that attracted to Charlotte. It's not that he fucking loves Ric Flair. Yeah. He's willing to do anything for him. So, um, <laughs> so, I tell you one thing. I will say, Charlotte, she has become the heel that this women division needs. She's taken to that role very, very well. And the whole dynamic recently that we started said that we were worried before that it was becoming the Ric Flair show. It's become a little bit less like that recently. It's become yeah. more Charlotte as the speaker, as the leader, and Flair's kind of there, almost riding off her coattails a little bit at some point. So, what's well, which kind of, that point that Charlotte's like, woo, you woo, yeah. Yeah, it's like going, Rick. I go, on, Dad. I am allowing you to. Yeah, it's like she's calling the shots a bit. So I'm a little bit happy with that dynamic. Natalia comes out, says it's uh, not about Charles Robinson or Charlotte. It's about Rick. Funny enough, that's a little bit against what we just said there. He said he paid a referee to screw her out. Uh, sorry, to screw her. Dot dot dot. Out of a title shot. And, like there was a little bit of a gap between screw her and out of a title shot. I was like, you paid a referee to screw you. Wow, that's we're getting Game of Thrones up in this shit. Jeez, that's it. That's sort of shit. I don't think I don't think Ric Flair paid Charles Robinson to screw her. I think he just said, "Can you screw her?" And Charles Robinson loves her so much. He was like, "Yeah, Rick, sure." And that's exactly how it went. Uh, she uses Brett's line saying, "The hearts are the best there was, best there is, the best there ever will be." I will say that her father, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, must feel like he doesn't have a daughter, or as if his career never existed. Yeah. And they always play it up like, like Brett is the fatherly figure to her. And I'm like, she actually has a dad, like, who is quite a legendary figure in his own right when it comes to pro wrestling. So, still. I remember, is he Hall of Fame? Uh, if he isn't, he should be. I think he's had a lot of personal problems, though. I think, no, I don't, I don't think he is. I don't think he is, no. No, yeah. he, he'd go in as Hart Dynasty, wouldn't he? I, I, I think he's worthy of an induction himself, personally. I'd say, and yeah. Um, for for the Hart Foundation, no, I don't want like him going as Hart. He needs to go in by himself. He's, but like I said, he's one of those she's guys. not even a whole Hart. Yeah, technically, she's only, only with the Hearts because she's the she's the daughter of of Neidhart, who doesn't have any relation to Brett. The only reason they were teamed up is because they had Hart in their name. And that's how they've become the Hart Foundation. So, yeah. there we are. Um, so, Natalia clears the ring. Lessons, bitch. <laughs> Lessons. Science, bitch. Yeah. Um, Natalia clears, <laughs> clears the ring, locks in the sharpshooter on Rick, and then wears Flair's watch and jacket. Okay. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of this. That proves a point. Yeah, sure. Apparently. She, she should have elbow dropped the jacket, and I'm sure Rick Flair would have been oh, fucking bitch. pissed off. Yeah. Uh, one thing about that camp WWE mat that Ric Flair folds the laundry by elbow dropping the wall first. Great touch. <laughs> Great touch. Uh, so now I have to watch this. Yeah, you have to watch it. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this rivalry continuing. I th- I saw this as a stopgap rivalry because I'm like, hold on a minute. The lack of Sasha Banks since WrestleMania is a bit fucking alarming at this point. Yeah. She was the real moneymaker in this division. Let's be honest. God damn it, where's my Sasha? Yeah. Um, so that they haven't even had a title match between Sasha and Charlotte on the main roster yet. So it's still there. It's still for them, for, the, for them to do. They need to start building that up. I mean, maybe they're building up for SummerSlam. They think they could build us up into a big match. But I'm a little bit like, now you're just wasting time to get to that point. So yeah. That's a bit of a shame. I'm a fan of Natalia, but... You're going to build it. What's, what's Sasha doing at the moment? Yeah. Nothing. That's it. So uh, You need to keep her strong while this is all going on. And you haven't seen her. She's been off TV for the majority of this time. So, so yeah, I mean, fuck, we haven't even seen, we haven't seen Becky Lynch that much recently until today. Yeah. Yeah, so it's quite a shame. Uh, backstage, Stephanie speaks to the Flares. She sets up a rematch with Charlotte and Natalia at Extreme Rules in a submission match. And she also bans Rick from ringside. So I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Surely Shane should have been the one to have done that. As the face owner, right? I mean, what reason that does Steph have to do this that benefits her own agenda. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I'm looking at it like, but she's the heel owner. She was heel on this show because she fucking cancelled the Ambrose Asylum. And she comes across here like, oh, she's the do-gooder. I'm like, you have Shane in the building. Just do let him do it. Isn't that the point? They're trying to play it up that Shane's the fact. I, I don't know. Just didn't, didn't, I don't know. Didn't sit well with me. Reigns and Usos versus Styles, Gallows and Anderson. JBL drops a Leicester City reference for absolutely no reason. Uh, I really want JBL to, like, there was a lot of moments in this episode where I'm like, I really want JBL to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Or go away. Which one comes first? What's funny, Matt, is I actually think he did a half-decent job at payback in some matches. And then he went straight back to being who he usually is on Raw. So, yeah. Roman Reigns is booed again. And uh, it pains me. music hit. Yeah, Again. it pains me, Matt, because I know I say it every week, but I can just see the huge potential of this guy going heel. He could be the biggest heel in the company overnight, and they just yeah. don't choose to do it. Decent match, this though. Uh, there's a decent uh, potential in a big time pay per view match involving these groups. Styles. Uh, <clears throat> so wait, so there's a point in this match that Styles. Uh, picks up the victory after a very... Oh, I thought it was a good match, Matt. I thought it was, yes, I thought it was solid. Uh, with a phenomenal forearm, he wins the match. Afterwards, Anderson and Gallows have a steel chair. They tell him, hit Reigns with it, but he refuses. Leading the Usos to use it on, any, uh, use it on Styles anyway. So Styles fires back, hitting them with the chair. Roman overlooks this and goes into full-on Cena mode, lays out st- Styles. The entire arena is booing him for doing this, by the way. Yeah. He powerbombs Styles through the announce table and he snapped at the thought of his beloved cousins being attacked. And I'm like, awesome. Why didn't he do that when the Usos were attacked by the Dudleys or even with Gallows and Anderson the night that they debuted? In the first place, yeah. He kind of picks and chooses when he wants to be this violent... I'm a good cousin. Yeah, this this, this very... Uh, guarding cousin who just doesn't take any shit from anyone that damages them. He's like, oh, he, see, the rule was raised. He has to be in the close vicinity. If it's if it's too much of a walk to him to go and do that shit, then he's yeah. not going to do it. It's too much work. So that, that's what it is. Uh, here's the thing with this. I'm sure this finish would have been awesome. The visual styles being laid out, Roman Reigns snapping, taking the fight to him. I see, especially considering he's been put through a table and you've got, you know, with extreme rules being next and it's an extreme rules match mm. like sticking yeah. it through a table is legal and could be like a real defining moment of such a match yeah and it's a big time finish your big table spot at the end of the show so i'm sure that it would have been fantastic if reigns was being treated like the face wwe thinks he is but he's not so therefore you had everyone booing him doing it so it comes across as a little bit like well this is awkward again how many endings involving Roman Reigns are we going to think this fucking awkward before it for before this fucking changes? WrestleMania was awkward enough. That was awkward enough for for a year's worth, but yeah. we're still getting more. All in all, Matt, and that's before it overran. Yeah, yeah. All in all, I wasn't a big fan of this week's show. I have to admit. no. 
I think it's one of those shows that I'm going to put down as a skip it on my rating for this week. What's your What's your rating for this? Oh, week? I could agree with that. Cesaro yeah. versus Owens was good. It was right at the start of the show, though. After that, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's one of those meh shows that doesn't really excite me, but wasn't so horrible that warrants like a huge rant on anything particularly it was, a- abrasive. It was a nothing show. It was a nothing show. Yeah, let's let's be honest. Um, maybe WWE now is starting to find that WrestleMania hangover. They managed to delay it for a couple of weeks, and then now they've started to have some of the old problems are starting to come back a little bit. But yeah. There we are, you know, on the show. I think we've run over time, Matt. I'm pretty sure we have. Um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think we're on about two. Uh, I've actually just got a, a phone call. Stephanie McMahon needs her weed, so I need to go do that. So, um, you know. Ah, you know. you're the runner man now. I am the runner man. Uh, she pays good. What can I say? What can I say? She pays well. That's it. Still. All oh, right, guys. More we'll, than that. We'll go through our plugs, and then we'll get the hell out of Dodge. We'll let, leave you to your to your stuff this week. Also, there's one thing I also want to <clears throat> leave, leave at the feet of you guys. Um, we want a little bit of feedback from you regarding whether or not uh, you might be interested in having a way that through Facebook, having a link to listening to us prepare and record the show. Because we actually live stream the show. We do it. We do it privately so we can edit it later right that's the way that we're recording now it's just better 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 way for us to do it it's safer right uh me and matt aren't fully decided but i just want to leave the option on the table out there because if you guys have enough if you guys really want it enough then we will look into maybe doing that so we can say on a set date you can catch it a little bit earlier you know it won't bother us as much because we still get the monetization from that it still goes into the show still gets the viewership still gets your response we wouldn't be taking questions on the fly but it could be something that you can interact with or even chat with other people as we do it it's up to you guys or maybe or not you prefer when it's fully edited and all that lot it's really up to you i've really seen hear me and matt yapping before the the show going oh, is our audio levels fine is everything sounding great oh, i did this today and then you know get five minutes of us talking shit before the thing starts but no, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it down to you guys anyway matt let's do our plugs and for once i would like us to do it where you do the plugs i do and you and i do the plugs you do let's do it okay so the the, the, the like share and subscribe and all that other youtube jazz mm. And you can always follow us on Facebook of facebook.com forward slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. Yeah, set me up, set me up, do it, do it. But then there's always the fabled Twitter handle of which I am the leader of. And that Twitter handle is at Talk Wrestle Pod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do I feel so genuinely happy to be doing this? This feels like bizarro world right now. This is crazy. <laughs> just like you sound like you've broken your voice again. <laughs> yeah, I'm squeezing my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. What would they send us audio questions and emails to? Let's see if you know this. It's quite easy to be honest. I should hope so, considering I set up the email account. <laughs> <Go on then. sighs> of the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast at gmail.com. Uh, well, it's not. You got it wrong. It's just let's talk wrestling podcast at gmail dot com. <laughs> oh, that shit! Chat yeah. shit get bagged, Matt. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just set it up so I could do the Twitter. I've I, I I've lost my mind. I the illness has taken over me. I, I I am sweating like a fucker. I am being so happy trying to block out the 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 illness. I'm just like fuck this shit. People are going to be thinking that Tony was smoking something tonight. I really wasn't. I really wasn't. I was just having fun. You and Steph, you and Stephanie, my man, were sharing spliffs. Ah, uh, but maybe, maybe, maybe just a little bit. Turn on weed. She can chug like a champion. Let's just say that. So, uh, all right then. Don't know how chugging comes into effect, but okay. Because well, you can, can you have alcohol and, and um, stuff at the same okay. time? Cool, of course you can. Right? The fact that we were talking about drugs and you're like chugging, you're like. That's not the same thing. Knowing my yeah. sexual, my sexual um, jokes on this podcast, that could have gone a very, very dark path. But you know what? I'm better than that. So we need to wrap up this show, Matt. What the fuck are we doing? All right, guys, have a great week. We'll catch you next time. Lucha Review, episode 125 with a whole new graphics. I hope you guys do enjoy it. I'm basically spending the entire week working on it, so I hope it's really good for you guys. Uh, apart from that, have a great week, and we'll catch you all next time. We'll catch you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Bye. That's why I always imagine that. Bye bye. <laughs> Uh, to the one or two people that are still listening to this podcast, I apologise at this point. Like, <laughs> all right then, bye.